Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. It's sad when HOAs bring their tenants to the point where they decide to go to court, but our OP had no other choice. My town is refusing to enforce the law on people who are poor. At the beginning of the year, my neighbor decided to rent his detached garage to a woman and her boyfriend. A few weeks after they moved in, there started to be problems. The renter started screaming and fighting, collecting junk outside their dwelling, including lots of trash, letting their dog dig into my yard, and trespassing on my property, to name a few things. I called my county's animal control every time I had an issue with their dog, and called the police every time I had an issue with my neighbor. I have cameras up and have footage of all the crap they've pulled. I've asked the renters to stop. I've attempted to talk to my neighbor, with no avail. In an attempt to get these jerks gone, I spoke to my county's code enforcement because garages are not allowed to be dwellings in my county. Unfortunately, I live in city limits and so it falls to my city for jurisdiction. They also have the same law, but they've decided to not enforce this law because the renters are poor and are on disability and could sue the city for kicking them out. Actual words from a person I spoke to in my town hall. I've spoken with another person who works in my town, is a cop. And not enforcing the law on poor people is becoming the norm in my town. Anything from speeding to theft is not enforced if you claim that it was done because you are poor. Unfortunately, the crime rate in my town has skyrocketed in the last year while the town's resident number hasn't increased. But more and more, poor people seem to be committing crimes. I get that the city has some ability to use discretion in matters like this, but can they just decide to not enforce the law on a certain group of people? I went and spoke with my town's mayor, he understood where I was coming from, and I have a date to address my city council with the issue that I'm having with the police department and the city's current stance on enforcing laws. I was also informed that the state of Oregon passed a law requiring almost all towns and counties to allow additional dwelling units ADUs. My mayor has asked me to help lead a committee to make my town's laws favorable to all parties as they try to come into compliance. As for my neighbors, the renters, well, they're in some hot water. A few days after I made my post, my friend, who's a mandatory reporter, was house-sitting for me. She witnessed the renter's boyfriend beat one of the grandkids with a belt. She called DHS and the police. The police did nothing, and DHS took the report. The police not doing anything? They didn't even show up. Pissed my friend off. My friend talked with an individual from the state's police who they know from work and they let them know something seriously off about the renters and that the local PD doesn't want to deal with it. Well, over a week ago, I witnessed a guy shooting up while the crazy neighbor lady talked to him. I called my county's drug task force and reported it. Two days later, the county raided the dwelling and arrested the neighbors, the renters, the daughter and another person, all for dealing something illegal. The kids taken into protective custody and me and a few other people were questioned about everything. My county and state police are now in the process of reviewing my town's police force for corruption. Apparently, they've had corruption issues several times in the past. And our second story. Fake me out on a tip? Lose your cigarettes. I work as a bartender in a pretty low-key bar. I get a relatively wide variety of people coming in on a regular basis. Most of them are wonderful. Some not so much. Edit. I don't get paid a wage, I work for tips only. Tonight was not the best of nights on the money front, had to put up with a lot of BS and had a number of people stiff me for absolutely no reason. Not a big deal, some nights are just like that, whatever. In comes this guy towards the middle of the night, he orders his drink and pays with a 20. As I'm making his drink, he's telling me some story about who knows what, talking on and on, and I'm listening and commenting at the right moments. Paying him attention, I bring him his change. He pockets it, obviously not going to tip. Like I said, it happens. Not a big deal. I just start breaking away from the conversation and moving on to take care of other customers. Well, once he sees that I'm moving on to take care of other people before he's done with his story, he calls me over as he's pulling a couple of dollars out of his wallet. Cool, I think. He either needs something else or wants to tip me. Either way, I go back over. He's holding the money like he's going to give it to me, but instead of ordering anything, he just continues to tell his story, as other people are waiting to be served. I listen for a minute, figuring he doesn't need anything and just wants to be heard. All this time, he's holding the money like he's going to hand it to me in a second when he's done talking. Once he's finished, I comment, obligatory laugh, and then he just walks away. 
Now, I normally don't mind the occasional stiffer and will be just as nice and polite to people that can't tip as those who can. I get it. Sometimes money's tight and you just want to drink. As a rule, I don't give people any kind of hard time about it because it all comes out in the wash, you know? I also don't mind listening to people's stories and talking with customers when I'm not busy serving drinks. It's actually one of my favorite parts of the job. But to intentionally taunt me with money to get my attention and then proceed to waste my time? That's next level rudeness. Cue in the revenge. After his story, he'd walked off to go play pool, leaving his pack of cigarettes and a lighter on the bar. A lot of people leave their empty packs on the bar for me to throw away, so I check to see if it's empty. Nope, almost a full pack. I leave it and continue on about my business working. More people come in and crowd around where he'd left his pack of cigarettes. So you know what I did? I took that pack of cigarettes and the lighter and put them behind the bar. He comes around about 30 minutes later. His son's waiting for him in the car to leave and he's looking for his pack of cigarettes. Have you seen my cigarettes? I left them right here with a lighter. Did anyone pick them up? Sorry, sir, I haven't seen them. Hope you find them. Have a good night. Inward giggle. He continues to look around for a little bit longer, asking me again if I'd seen them, and me again denying. He looks put off, eventually leaves. And then I bum them all out to my other patrons. Sweet, sweet revenge. Moral of the story, be kind to your service industry workers if you want them to be kind to you. Or watch your own damn cigarettes. I thought you were just going to spill water on them. Oh, sorry about that. And our next story. Crazy lady breaks down door of neighbor's house to steal food. I remember when I was a kid and my mom doesn't have anyone else in the house to help with her laundry because we were still young kids and there's four of us kids so there's this big mountain of laundry stacking in a corner. My dad decided to hire our neighbors to occasionally wash clothes and they pay her depending on how much she washed. We didn't have a washing machine back then by the way. It all went well. The pile of laundry was slowly sinking, and we even found clothes that have been missing for years. However, I started noticing that the lady's a bit insane. Or maybe entitled. She sometimes enters the house with no permission to push me aside and sit on the couch to watch television. And when I'm eating chips, she'd reach in and grab a handful without saying anything. And what really bothers me is she stinks a lot, like she smells of soy sauce and vinegar with sweat added to it. I didn't hate her that much because I was taught to treat her nicely, but each month she gets worse. While my parents are gone, she'll suddenly barge in, grab dinner for the kids, and even pocket some chips for us and either lies down on the living room floor or watch TV. Maybe even sit next to me and invade our personal space bubbles and watch us draw, play and stuff, while saying stuff that children shouldn't even know of. I started telling my dad, but he just tells me to not mind her as she was kicked out of her house recently. So I did. One afternoon, I was home alone. I fell asleep. Dad had the gate locked and the door shut, and left me keys, snacks, and money in case of emergencies. I was suddenly alarmed when I hear a loud thud. I rushed outside, grabbing onto the chair, only to see the gates lock broken and the door was forced open, like the damage was terrifying. I got scared and hid upstairs, peeking down and shaking from fear, and I see the lady enter the living room to the kitchen and reach for food. I asked her what she's doing, and she replies with nothing. I gesture to the food and money in her hand, and she just ignores me and leaves a child in her house alone with the locks broken. I told it all to my parents, and they were pissed off, calling her from outside to tell her to no longer enter the house. She was pissed off, mocked my dad, and after that, we never saw her. And our last story. Homeowners Association says our wheelchair van in the driveway violates their bylaws. Our home is bound by an HOA. They were good for years, but it's grown difficult for the last two. By coincidence, I have both a husband and a son who have unrelated disabilities. My husband uses a scooter most of the time and a power wheelchair occasionally, likely to be the chair more than the scooter as he gets older. My son uses a wheelchair. We've always had a wheelchair accessible minivan, but it cannot accommodate both chairs at once and could not be cost effectively modified to do so, which severely limited transportation for our family. Several months ago, a woman at church inherited a handicap accessible van that can accommodate two wheelchair users and also has a powered platform on the rear to accommodate a scooter. The van was paid off and she had no use for it and she's an amazing person. 
She donated it to our family so that the three of us can all ride in the car together. The van is a modified Ford Transit, which is sold as a commercial vehicle. It's obviously been a huge blessing. Unfortunately, because of the design of the rear platform and the fact that we have had to modify our garage to add a wheelchair ramp, we cannot fit this vehicle in our garage so it lives in our driveway. The HOA has developed a rule saying that no vehicles may be parked in driveways overnight and commercial vehicles may not be parked in driveways at all except when driven by a service person hired for repairs. So our van violates this in both ways. A, we need to park it in the driveway overnight, and B, though we do not use it commercially, it is on their list of what's considered a commercial vehicle. They say that vehicles of this type appear as work vehicles and look unsavory. We've been arguing for months that it should be allowed as we own it explicitly to accommodate a disability. However, they argue that either a passenger vehicle, like a standard minivan, could be modified for the same purpose, or we could expand our garage. However, our garage is currently as close to the right-of-way space as it's allowed to be, so we cannot actually expand it toward the front of the property, and expanding it to the rear of the property would mean that some of our kitchen turns into garage, and then our kitchen would no longer be accessible, so we'd have to keep expanding all the way through the house. We cannot afford to replace it either. While it's fairly valuable, a new van with the exact modifications we need costs much more. We've argued with the HOA for months, have gone door to door and asked neighbors to help pressure the board, etc., and many have pitied us, but we've gotten nowhere. The board has declined to hear on the topic of repealing that particular measure. Some neighbors have volunteered to try and join the board to inspire bigger change, which is great, but the board won't be up for election for another 10 months. In the meantime, the board has announced publicly that homes in violation will incur daily fines and after 15 days, they'll begin towing a vehicle in violation. They told us they gave us a grace period to find another vehicle or adjust our garage. Well, F you guys, I'll see you in court. What they're asking isn't reasonable, and I'm guessing a judge isn't going to like them violating the ADA. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.